ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our new series. I'm sure some of you knew this, okay, but the team that I've wanted to take over here is the Smashville Predators. Uh, you know, an interesting team, truly, after their Stanley Cup run in 2017, where they came up just short to the Pittsburgh Penguins, falling in six games, you know. It, it was it was rough, you know. They come off as a, off of that wild card, right? And then everyone, you know, they bounce back the next year. They get the first, or they get first in the Central, right? They they go 49, 29, and six. They have this great run, right? And they get bounced, um, you know. And then, you know, the next year they're like, you know what? That was just a fluke. We come back, bam, COVID hits, bubble year. Then they lose to, I believe that one they lost to, uh, I believe the bubble year they lost to Arizona in the playoffs, well, in the play-in rounds to get into the playoffs. Um, and then after that, right, then we have these weird divisions. Everything's kind of, you know, everything's kind of wonky, right? We come in, and it's a shortened season, weird divisions. We already covered that. They go 31-23-2 and, and end up playing Carolina in the opening round. I know, tough draw, right? And they lose in six games. It's a team that has consistently been at the top, or at the very least, at the playoff level of the NHL over the past few years. But they're a team that lacks the certain, oh, how do I put it? The certain touch that it's going to take to get over that hump. The little bit extra that they need to just push on past, right? So when I look at this roster, I think one thing, it's there's not a whole lot of talent. Um, and I don't say that as, you know, they're not very good. But, you know, Philip Forsberg is the best forward on this roster. And I think it's it, it would be generous to say that he is a, I don't know, elite player. He is very good, very, very good, especially in the game. 86 overall, nothing to sneeze at. However, typically for a championship roster, at least in NHL, you want that to be a second liner. Granlin at 85, his defense has been suspect, but his offense is solid. Johansson, way overpaid, right, at, what is he getting, 8 mil? Jesus Christ, for four years, oh Lord. Uh, and then we have Duchesne at five years at 8 mil. So those are a couple of terrible contracts, right? But this is a team that, they, even this year, you know, they're first in the in the central, but does anybody really expect them to make that push to be the, you know, the team to beat? The lone bright spot being UC Soros, 26 years old, medium elite overall. Um, for some reason, this roster that I had, had him at medium starter, and I was like, that's just not right. He is incredible. He deserves to be medium elite at least. Um, but yeah, then you mix in some young guys like Tolvanen, like a Luke Kunin, like Tomasino here. You know, it's an interesting roster, like Dante Fabro, even. Um, it's an interesting roster, and it's, it's, there's a bunch of different ways you could take it. Obviously, you could take it the rebuild route. You know, it'd probably be a lot easier. Just trade away contracts, trade away Johansson, trade away Duchesne, you know. Find ways to make these guys, or to get, to get rid of these guys. Jeez, English is difficult. Um, but to try to find ways to, to get rid of these guys and, and move on and be able to rebuild better, right? But I do that, like, all the time. Like, like all the time. I mean, I essentially just got done doing that. Not in Detroit, because in Detroit we had a good foundation to build on. I just had to accelerate the rebuild. But in Arizona, it was a blank canvas. So I don't want a blank canvas. I want to make this team competitive. I want to be in playoffs year one. But that being said, I also definitely want a high pick. And I have a few ways that we're going to uh, to make this team competitive. Don't get me wrong, but in this one, we're just going to be looking over the roster, you know, talking about it, talking about the plans, the things that we want to do. So I'm not going to lie, I've done some scouting. There are some players that I like, but we'll get into those in the actual episode one. For now, let's go ahead and let's look at the contract screen because I feel like this is going to bring up, a, or it's going to show you guys what I'm what I'm talking about here. So we have 10 million cap space currently. We have to re-sign Forsberg. Oh Lord. Okay, he wants to be re-signed, so that's, he'll, I mean, he'll be, uh, he'll be interesting, that's for sure. Um, Kuhn in here, you know, maybe we can get him at like 5.5 for seven years, make him a second liner, that could be something that's interesting. Cousins won't be too bad. Uh, Soros, though, great contract for Soros. 
You know what, now let's go ahead and let's actually break down the roster rather than look at the expiring deals. So we'll start with the, oh, not in the system, uh, the forward core. You know, um, when it comes to this, this core, obviously they're led by Forsberg, but you have a lot of guys that are this 84 to 86 range. And I think what I want to do is I want to have a team that is great defensively and then offensively is capable. So I think 84 to 86 is the, is the target range, but I want to get probably at least one more guy, maybe two more, um, that can fit into this, this system and can be able to, uh, to develop nicely. Um, cause that's the other thing we, something that I've noticed when looking at this roster, you know, you have the 29, 29, 30, 27, right. And then 23, 22, you don't really have anyone in that like 24 to 26 range that media, you know, the, the guys who were able to take that next step still, but are good now. I don't know if that makes sense or not, but but uh, we'll get into it later. Uh, you know, Jeanneau here is like the per this is the age that you want, but not the overall, obviously. Um, Tomasino is going to be great for us. I'm going to, I have a bunch of plans for him. I really do. This guy, he, I think he's going to be really good. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this that's really the only guy in the NHL aside from Tolvanen. Oh my Lord, I know it's late, but God, I can't be yawning. And Kunin, are the, like these are the guys that can grow, so we're going to try to play them a bit. But these guys here, I'm going to do my best to make them worth their contracts. I really am. Um, specifically, the two that are making $8 million. Lord. Lord have mercy on us all there. Um, but yeah, this this forward core, it's, it's kind of weak, but I think that staying, staying weak offensively, but being strong defensively is going to be the theme of this. You know, when I think of when I think of Nashville, I think of the Shea Weber, Ryan Suter days, the Pecorine day, days, where scoring on them, scoring one on them was like, oh, we had a good game, we did well. So that's that's going to be the goal here. So let's go ahead. Uh, let's look at anybody in the system that we have. Um, overall wise, not really. In terms, oh, Cody Glass, he's going to be an NHLer. What is he asking for? Uh, yeah, we could give him that. So he'll be fun. Um, you know, I'm not sure how to pronounce this guy's name. I'm going to be honest, Zach. I don't know how to pronounce your name, buddy. But he should be something for us, hopefully. Igor, probably not, given that he's 20 already. Um, Evangelista, I believe. Uh, he, I'm not sure. Uh, mm. Low top sixes are difficult to judge. Luff could be interesting. He could be something. Uh, but we don't really have a whole lot to work with down here. I think that's fair to say. So now let's, let's move on to the defenseman. We'll look at, do we have anything in the system? Not really. Again, you know, maybe Ference can become something. Um, but we don't really have a, bit, a lot of potential down here. On the roster, right? Obviously, we have Roman Yossi, who is, you know, going to be Norris contender every year, year in, year out. He's going to be the dude, you know. And then we have Ekholm who's a great guy. I really, I like his contract this year and next year even is not bad at all. Um, Dante Fabro, this is the future. This is someone that we're going to have to grow. And I know uh, I did give him high top four because he never grows with medium top four. And I really just wanted to try to see if we can get him to grow at all. Uh, but Dante Fabro, you know, 23, hopefully we can get him to grow a bit. Um, yeah, that's, that's about it. Felipe Myers is an interesting one potentially could earn himself more playing time if he can become better. Uh, Benning, not important. Carrier, maybe. I mean, it's it's really getting to the point where Alexander Carrier kind of needs to decide, you know, are you going to be something or are you going to just be an AHLer? And Borowicki is negligible. In goal, though, this is our strength. This truly is. UC Saros in his prime, great young goalie, really happy to have him on a great contract as well. Uh, Riddich, you know, good backup. But we also have Askarov, who was one of the best goalies in the draft. I believe, was this last year, I think? I think this was just this past year. Um, I believe so, because it was him and... No, it was two drafts ago, wasn't it? I'm not sure. Either way, um, Askarov is going to be a great young goalie for us to be able to develop, so that hopefully that means that we're not going to have to worry about that. In the system, all we really have is Ingram, who isn't great, could potentially grow into a backup. But yeah, so that's the roster, guys. Those are the plans that I currently have for the roster. Later today, you'll be getting episode one, so I hope you all are hyped for that. If you are, please subscribe, 
like the video, you know, comment something, comment, uh, so comment something about how you, or who you guys want me to target. Okay. Um, so thank you all so much for watching. If you've enjoyed, don't forget to do all that stuff and I will see you guys in the next one. Goodbye and peace out. I just said that backwards. God.